can sea waves generate electricity cost-effectively? Today we're speaking with Ina Braverman, who's the CEO of the Israeli company EcoWave Power, that's on its way to Nasdaq First North in Stockholm. Welcome, Ina. Thank you very much. How is it that your technology works? So basically the technology is very simple and we attach floaters to existing structures and the floaters are going up and down with the movement of the waves. They're pushing the hydro cylinders which transmit biodegradable fluid into land located accumulators. A pressure is being built, the higher the waves is, the higher the pressure, which is used to turn the hydro motor, turn in the generator and send in clean electricity into the grid. Mm -hmm. uh, how often are sea waves appropriately big? Not too big, not too short. So actually we're working on a very uh, wide range of waves. We're starting to produce energy from half a meter and until a wave height of like five meters, which is uh, the most common type of waves that are in the onshore and nearshore environment. So in suitable locations, we can generate 80 or 90% of the time from the waves there. Mm -hmm. uh, which geographic markets do you think are most interesting for the company? So we're actually interested in a variety of geographic markets. Uh, we're looking at uh, Europe, at Asia, in the United States. The main focus right now and the reason for us coming here to Sweden and making the share swap and becoming a Swedish company is uh, the fact that we're inter interested in the European market. Uh, one third of the project's pipeline of the company is in Europe and Europe is uh, of course the most supportive out of anywhere in the world of uh, implementing renewable energies and fighting climate change. So we really find uh, this market interesting as a primarily market. market. Mm. Uh, coasts can be a tough environment. You can have corrosion, mm -hmm. you can have a marine growth on objects yeah. and so on. Yeah. Uh, how long do your installation last and how much maintenance work do you have to do? So luckily our system is made in a very smart way. So basically only 10% of the cost of the system is in the water, only the floaters and they belong in the water. And 90% of the cost of the system is on land, just like a regular power station. So basically the maintenance costs are very minimal. There's nothing, uh, no specialized maintenance or something that is very hard uh, that needs to be made. We also approach the installations through the shoreline. So we don't need ships, we don't need divers, we don't need underwater cables. Uh, in terms of lifespan, uh, the lifespan of the equipment is 25 years. Mm -hmm. uh, people like coasts. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you find enough suitable places for this technology? So it's very important to say that we don't use any primary coastlines or primary uh, prime real estate. Uh, we're basically installing on existing structures such as breakwaters, piers, jetties. Most of those structures are uh, actually located in ports, which are very industrial zones. So it does not occupy any type of coastal strip where people tan or do sports or anything like that. Mm. Only unused cement structures that are already in the water that are not used for anything other than breaking the waves. So we take something actually that damage the environment because so much cement in the water is not so good, but we have to build it to protect the ports and the local populations on the coastlines and we turn it into a source of clean energy. Okay. Um, how uh, do you get your revenue? What is the business model? So our preferred business model is actually BOO, which means build, own and operate, meaning we actually construct the assets and we operate them for 25 years. The assets usually return the investment in three to six years and then the rest of the time we're just uh, making revenues from the electricity sale. Mm. Uh, one important aspect is how cost effective uh, technology mm -hmm. is. Uh, how is yours? So the technology is uh, very cost effective. Uh, right now uh, we're the same price as solar energy, which had a significant decrease in the recent years, especially when China came into the market. Uh, we're a bit cheaper than wind energy. Uh, the big advantage of wave energy, I think, other than the good cost, is the fact that it can generate around the clock in suitable locations. So it's a very good uh, complementary technology for solar and for wind. I really believe that in order to have a 100% renewable energy world, we need to implement wind, wave, solar and different types of technologies together. Mm -hmm. uh, like you say, solar energy and mm -hmm. solar electricity has been going down in price. Yeah. Uh, can you handle competition if it keeps going down further? Listen, we when solar started about 20 years ago, they started at a price of around $12 million per one megawatt and 3% uh, capacity factor, which is very low. Uh, we're just starting now and the company started in 2011, so it's a very new kind of uh, source of electricity. Uh, in energy years, it's very young and we're already the same price as solar energy. So of course we have still a long way of taking the cost down and taking the efficiency up which will of course have a positive impact. 
Uh, but again, it's very important for me to state that I don't see solar energy or wind energy as competition. I really support, I think there's room for everybody, and I really support the implementation of all the resources together. Mm. Uh, you're looking at the valuation of the company now, about half a billion Swedish kroner. Uh, yeah. How much has been invested in the company so far? So six million dollar, which is around 60 million sec. Mm. And now you want to take in 150 million Swedish kroner roughly? Approximately, yeah. which will be sufficient for execution of two commercial scale wave farms. Mm. Uh, how much money do you think you will need until you can have a positive financial result? So according to our uh, forecast, we're actually looking to break even at 2022. And actually 2022 is a very important year for us because uh, by the time we will have a commercial scale operational power station for one to two years, which will make us entitled to get debt financing from banks. And then we will be able to build multiple power stations, a number of power stations in the same time instead of building them one by one, which is what we're doing now. And really from 2022 upwards, we will see a big increase in the company's construction abilities and the uh, growth of revenues. Mm. Uh, what do you think are the biggest challenges to reaching these goals? I think that the biggest challenge is unfortunately the fact that many companies in the past tried to generate wave energy in the offshore and the offshore is known to be very expensive and uh, they had a lot of problems of breakability. Companies like Pelamis from Scotland or Ocean Links in Australia, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars were invested there and they broke down after a few days of operation, uh, which wasn't of course a good uh, industry sign. Uh, so I think a lot of investors, they got kind of burnt from wave energy. So when they hear wave energy, they're a little bit you know, scared and wants to stay away. I think it's not the most positive scenario to go into an industry like that. Mm -hmm. But it's important to say that when EcoWave Power, our company developed its technology, we really looked uh, at all the challenges that the other uh, companies had and fixed them with our technology. So we're not building far into the sea. Our price is cost efficient. The technology is fully insurable and it is 100% environmentally friendly. So we are not at risk of having any of the problems that the offshore technologies uh, encountered. All right. Thank you enough for being with us here today and good Thank luck. Thank you. Thank you very much.